Hi, this is Igor from hdhat.com. In this short tutorial, we will look into using particles in Resolve's Fusion to create oscilloscope kinds of effects like you see on the screen. Particles are generally an advanced subject, but if you follow these steps, you should be just fine. Some basic knowledge of Fusion is necessary. We'll create a Fusion clip by searching for Fusion Composition. Drop it on the timeline. I'll make it a little longer. And then we'll step into Fusion. In Fusion, we'll add a particle generator and the particle render node. We'll connect it to the media out. I will switch the display to a single view and get rid of the checker underlay so we can see better what's going on. If I push play, you'll see particles already amassing inside of that spherical emitter. Let's modify a couple of things here. With the particle emitter node selected, we'll go here and change the size of the emitter. Make it about the diameter of the line that you want to create and we'll drag it over to the right side of the screen. Then we will add some velocity to the emitter and we'll change the angle to minus 180 degrees so it's emitting particles to the left. You can already see what's going on. We're creating little confetti-like particles and uh, I'll modify a few more things. We'll extend the lifespan of the particles so they can reach the left side of the screen. We'll add some lifespan variance, which means that some particles will, will die before the others. See how they kind of thinned the amount of particles here on the left? We're going to add a little bit of angle variance, which means that this emitter will be randomly emitting at a two degree angle. So see how that created a kind of a triangular shape. So, so the, the particles are spreading out as they age. Now let's go to the style settings. The default type of particle is a point particle, but we want something a little heavier, so I'll choose a blob. We're making an old school green color oscilloscope. We'll change the size of the particles. And size over life will make the particles bigger at the beginning of their life and smaller at the end. So they're sort of fading off as they age. Kind of like an, kind of like an old CRT type of oscilloscope. And now in fade controls, I will type 0.7 to make the particles fade off before they reach the end of the screen. Now, our particle needs to move up and down to create the sine wave. Of course, we could animate that by hand, but it would take a while. There's a better way to do it, however. I'll reset this. Right click on Y offset and select expression. Here we'll type in sine time. So we can use a sine function to generate a sine wave, but as you can see, the amplitude and the frequency are too high. Let's modify that. Whatever is inside of the parentheses controls the frequency. So we'll divide that by 8. Okay, and the amplitude is still high. So to reduce the amplitude, we'll divide everything by, let's say, 10. And push play. And that's a lot better. So again, this is frequency, and this is amplitude. So that was just a simple sine wave. I'll create a new version of the particle emitter node so I can show you a few more things. We'll right click on Y offset, remove expression, and we'll right click again, say modify with shake. So now we're creating a random shake, but the parameters are actually putting it outside of the screen. We can easily adjust it by go to modifiers and set the minimum and maximum values. So we'll say minimum is minus 0.3, maximum is 0.3. That's just a random curve. Now this is a pseudo-random function, so it will always it's repeatable. It'll always be the same on the same frame. It's not entirely random, but it does look random. Lower smoothness will make it more active. You can animate all of this by hand, so I'll create a new version and show you how that works. We'll right click on the Y offset, remove shake one. We'll go to spline. To begin, we need at least one keyframe which creates our curve here in the uh, spline editor. So I'm going to start randomly building this curve.
We'll make it smooth. Reduce the amplitude. And lift it up. The amplitude is still a little high, I think, here in the uh, in this portion. Okay, great. So we can see the whole thing on the screen. So that's created one phase of the loop. But the good thing is we can loop this infinitely. You can see the faint repetition of this basic phase that we built. Now the cool thing is that the particle effect is truly three-dimensional, even though it's uh, rendered in 2D for us over here. We can switch the emitter to 3D mode, and I'll show you what that means. It's grayed out. I wonder if that is a bug. In standalone Fusion, I believe I should be able to switch this to 3D, but it doesn't matter. I will just create a new particle render. We'll break this off. Drop it over there. And the default mode for particle render is 3D. Holding Alt key and middle mouse button allows us to spin around. It's a little hard to see what's going on with our blob. I'm going to switch the emitter type of particle from blob to point. Now you can see, we'll zoom in by holding the middle mouse button. So here's the cool thing. Since this is truly three-dimensional, we can make the particle spread in the Z distance. And uh, let's see what the what that looks like in 2D. We might need a few more particles. So I'll increase the number from 10 to maybe 20. And then we have to switch to blob to see it better. So you can see how they're spreading out in the three dimensions. When you play with these particle emitter parameters, you can create some really interesting stuff. Thank you for watching. Maybe you didn't know that aside from actually working in Resolve every day, I also write apps for Resolve. And you can find out more about that at my company's webpage, metafide.com.